can't tell if it's a little live thing. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is Gwen Whitaker. She is the owner and founder of the Green Fair Restaurant in Virginia. She's been on the show before, but today we are going to actually see the restaurant and we're also going to meet her chef, Pericles Silva, who is going to be making an amazing recipe. Please welcome Gwen to the show. It's very nice to see you again. Hey, Chef AJ. Great to, great to be back and, and to be back live this time, not just on Zoom, but actually at the restaurant. That is fantastic. I'm so glad that so, so people are coming now. Yes, absolutely. We just opened indoor dining about two weeks ago. So people are starting to come back and uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that things continue to, to go well. That's fantastic. I'm so happy to hear that. I'd love to see the restaurant because it wasn't open when we did our first broadcast. So give us a grand tour, madam. Sure. So I'm going to, I'm starting out outside so you can see our, see our logo here. Um, we're actually in a strip mall with uh, mom's organic market, which is very cool because everything that we make inside is um, organic, uh, which means that it um, was grown org in an organic soil and has the USDA organic uh, logo on it. And so I'm coming in the restaurant now, kind of the cool thing about uh, Green Fair when I opened the restaurant was that we wanted it to be a place of education. So we have a lot of books and almost all of the books that we have here, we've actually had um, the speakers, the authors of the books come through and do lectures. So uh, Dr. Colin Campbell has come here half a dozen times, uh, Neil Barnard, Dr. Esselstein, uh, Robin Chutkin, uh, Jean Bauer from Farm Sanctuary, um, Joel Furman. So pretty much all of the leaders in nutrition have come through here and when people um, eat in the restaurant, they um, actually not only enjoy a meal, but also get an education. And at the same time, uh, once a week, we teach classes that are um, based on the PCRM 21 Day Kickstart Your Health program. So we use the book. We're an educational alliance partner with PCRM. And people not only get a class, but they get meals to take home. So you can see this cooler that's behind me. People get um, seven, seven meals um, twice a week to take home. So for 21 days, they don't have to shop or cook. They basically are just eating healthy food um, that's local, seasonal, plant-based, organic. And then we do something called, it's whole food plant-based diet. So it's food free of added salt, oil, and sugar. That's fantastic. You're probably either the only or one of the only restaurants, at least that I've heard of, that is SOS free. I think there's, um, in addition, maybe to Tr True North in Santa Rosa, they have, uh, you know, I think they have like a uh, small buffet that you can go into. It's, I don't know that they have like a storefront, um, but people that are there go into that. And there may be something at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, but sort of other than that, I think we're the only ones that are kind of doing this whole education and food thing um, right now. Hopefully more people will join me in doing this, you know, as um, they recognize that there's a great demand for it. We've had maybe a thousand people go through our program now um, with maybe three dozen doctors, which is kind of the cool thing. Um, we see an average of 20% cholesterol drop when people go through the program. Usually people normalize their blood pressure and um, when they go back to their doctors, um, when they go back to their doctors, the doctors will take them off medication. And then the doctors get curious about what we're doing. And so they um, uh, come in and do the Kickstart program themselves. So it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty exciting. It's, uh, I think still a lot of doctors have this disconnect between what people are eating and the state of their health. So, um, it's great when I think one kickstart class that we had, we had four doctors in the class and the next month, one of the doctors sent four people through, from her office through the class. So there's definitely a need for this. That is just so cool. I wish we had something like that here. Somebody mentioned a restaurant in Austin, Casa de Luz, is, and it might be SOS free or close. There's, um, let's see, I think one of the places in, um, 
one of the places in uh, Austin, uh, I went with uh, Rip Esselstein when I was in um, Austin. They have a, I think they're doing like oil, oil free there as well. I don't know if it's organic or not. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's, um, so we have, we're sort of sparsely populated. I have a couple customers in here right now, one with the, with the child. So sorry about that. She's taking them outside. So, <laughs> uh, but it's always a dynamic environment. Um, we, uh, pri prior to pandemic, we showed uh, movies here. So we would do like floor to ceiling um, screen and would show a lot of the uh, documentaries. So Forks Over Knives and Cowspiracy and um, pretty much all of the documentaries that would help people along the way and trying to create a community. Uh, we did Italian night where we had, would have a buffet of Italian food and uh, salad bar. Uh, so, so people were, um, we, we had a really good uh, following and through the pandemic, people have really supported us. Um, I started a nonprofit, so we're able to take donations and grants now. And uh, we had one Kickstarter that went through the program and he made a significant donation to us after that. And we were able to do this um, diabetes project that I mentioned, I think the last time I was on your show. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll continue to do more specific focused um, projects like that, where we can show uh, immediate uh, change on a specific um, you know, health concern that people have. That's just, and then, that's just yeah. so cool that it's not, it's just more than a restaurant. It's really a co co community and it's like an institution of learning. Yeah. I think, you know, I, when I had the start of the restaurant with Pericles, it was not just feed people a meal, but change a life. It was uh, give people something more than just food to walk out with sort of food for thought, you know, hopefully that would uh, take people on their way. So it's been, it's been pretty cool. I love that. That would be a great tagline for the window. More yeah. Than the yeah. I love that. You do, do you yeah. ever see random people walking in, Gwen, like just off the street looking for a bite and have no idea what they're getting into? We have a lot of people that wander in uh, from the Thai restaurant next door and they look around and they're like, ah, uh, uh, I think we're in the wrong place. So yeah, that's, that's true when they see books and we, this, this was sort of funny in um, December when we were doing the diabetes project, it was all um, African-Americans. And we had a line of people that were waiting to get on the scale. And this DoorDash guy came in and he was um, standing in front of the, um, he was standing in front of the, uh, uh, the food, looking at this line of people saying, um, is this a restaurant? Uh, so it was kind of, it was kind of funny. No, 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 no. So one of the things that, um, you know, I think that we've sort of noticed, um, and people don't notice this, but when you're on an oil free diet, you can actually tell what restaurants can do that by, um, looking at the pavement in front of the restaurant. So I'm not sure if I can flip my screen, but if you look at the restaurant that's next door to us, there's like a trail of black sort of going out on the pavement. And every once in a while they go through and power wash it. And that's basically the, um, the oil from the, the cooking in the back. And also if you look at the ceiling over the, the hooded stove, there's like a rim of, of grease on the ceiling. So that's not only in the air and on the ground, it's also in the customers, you know, that are coming in and out. So we pride ourselves on, on being a, um, a clean place to eat. And, you know, as people don't realize that once you stop cooking with oil, you not only save money, calories, your health, but the cleanup is so much easier. It, it absolutely is. If you have to scrub a pan, you're doing things wrong. I love it. How did you get hooked up with Pericles as your chef? So I had started a project with uh, Colin Campbell and his son, Nelson, in the Plant Pure Nation film, they were doing these jump starts. And I had asked them to support me doing one of those in uh, the Reston area. And I had 45 people that we did all the blood testing. I hired a nurse to do blood testing and we did sort of before and after. We gave them food from Nelson Campbell. So he drove a truck, truck up with frozen food. And I needed a place to store the food. So I had reached out to Whole Foods and that Pericles Silva was working there. 
and you know, I told them what we were doing and they Whole Foods ended up letting us use their uh, freezer space. They catered the event that Colin Campbell had. And then I stayed in contact with Pericles. And after the program was finished, I said, let's do a restaurant together and have it focused on uh, not only just fixing plant-based, whole food, plant-based uh, food, but also doing this educational component. And he's a food for life instructor. Um, and I am now. And so uh, both of us sort of co-teach the classes. Um, he does it with a strong Brazilian accent. He can do the class in primarily in Portuguese. So when you, uh, he's going to do a Brazilian recipe, I think for the, uh, uh, the program a little bit later. And, um, uh, so I think English may be like his third language. So I'm there also not only to talk about health and nutrition, but to translate from Pericles. <laughs> do you both eat the way that you serve the food at the restaurant? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we, um, I, I think one of the things when you eat this way for a while and then all of a sudden you don't, you know, if you go out to, I was telling Pericles, I went to one of his favorite restaurants. It's a Brazilian steakhouse called Togo de Show and they have a big salad bar. So we usually go there and do the salad bar. And at the same time, they usually put like fried polenta down in front of you. And so uh, you know, if you wander into that space, then you usually pay a price for it. And especially if you eat this way for a long time, the bigger the price is uh, that you pay um, because you're sensitized. And it's like if you haven't smoked in a long time and you walk near anybody that smokes, you're going to you're going to uh, recognize that. So the same thing, it's like either it affects your sleep or your um, uh, your your uh, uh, inflammation after, you know, we, we, um, go lift weights together. So after, after you lift weights, you notice that you're a little bit more inflamed than normal. So you, you definitely feel it. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm going to show one more thing. I have, you haven't been out here yet, but when you come to Virginia, we have, I have all of this beautiful artwork. Um, and these are, uh, art from, um, Diane, Diane Whitehead. And uh, she's an artist in Colorado, but I bought these pictures before I opened the restaurant and they were kind of my mile, milestone uh, with me. There's just really beautiful, beautiful colors. And um, it's been, let's see, let's see, I've got some goats here. And people come in and they see the beautiful, the beautiful animal pictures and, um, they go, oh, why are the animal pictures in a vegan restaurant? It's like, well, because they're, they're happy they're on the walls and not on your plate. And um, I've got this 35-year um, uh, picture from PCRM. We're an educational alliance partner, as I mentioned. And Dr. Neal is doing really fabulous things with PCRM. And so we, uh, I'm, I'm the chair of their president's council and really support everything that they're doing. The International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine and um, other advocacy activities that they have sort of across the country. So it's teaming with other people that are doing really um, cool work. That's so that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of the restaurant. If I um, didn't mention one thing, it's our, um, I'm not sure how well you can see these, but we have uh, a plant-based baker and she's very slim and trim and she makes everything whole food, plant-based. And uh, if you eat that way, you'll stay, stay slim and trim. And um, people that don't know our, our muffins are plant-based, um, buy them and share them with their friends with, without even knowing that. So that's when we know that we were successful. I had no idea you had a baby. Maybe, maybe, your, maybe your pastry chef will come on sometime and make a recipe for us. I'm sure she would, she would love to do that. She's, um, she's a real go-getter. Not only is she a baker for us, she's also a massage therapist. So she, uh, you know, uh, suggests, I think, plant-based diet when she's helping people work out kinks and, uh, from inflammation. And so she's got a great, uh, marketing opportunity there as well. That's so, um, I would you like to that? I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying, I wish we had a restaurant like that. I wish everybody had a restaurant like that locally to them. Yeah, well, when you travel to the East Coast, you'll have to, you'll have to stop in and, and maybe do a class for our, uh, for our customers. That would be amazing. 
I'm going to walk back into the, into the restaurant and um, see this Raphael is uh, been with us. I think for a number of years, he's helping me with my Spanish. Um, muy caliente. <laughs> it's very hot. And um, I'm back here. I'm, you can see Pericles waving in the background. And this is Vaughn is our, he's going to videotape um, Pericles as he's, uh, videotaping uh, Pericles. He's a, he's our cameraman. Oh, come on, boy. He's a man. And um, Pericles has got all set up here. So I'm going to turn it over to him and uh, let him show you a Brazilian, a Brazil, Brazilian dish that's one of his favorites. Good, because I can't pronounce the name of it. <laughs> Thank you. Can, you. can you transfer over? I'm going to go ahead and drop off then. Um, do you want me to do you want me to get rid of you? I don't mean like literally, but uh, I, I can do that. Yeah. OK. Thanks, Gwen. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I know I'm only seeing the other camera that's been activated um, right now because you have two cameras activated and it's it's, it's not. Okay, let's see. We have one camera activated, right? Yeah, it's it's showing the other camera. So that's the problem when you have a three camera thing. It's not it's not showing you. So is there a way to drop off the second camera? Yeah, but then I'm gonna lose my microphone here. One second. You can do without that. Yeah, now I can see. One second. Now I can see. Can hold you? Actually, now I can only see me. Yeah. Let's see now. Better now? Yes, thank you. Can you chat? Can you hear me? I can hear you as long as you speak loudly. Yes. Okay. All right. So sorry about the uh I'll call that uh, my internet uh, technology problems in the video. So you have a question about how to pronounce the name of the dish? Yeah, I can't even say it. But feijota, feijota? Feijoada. Feijoada means feijão in Portuguese, means beans. So imagine these are a beans too. That's what it's called. Feijoada. Nice. Do you have a cookbook? Do you have a cookbook? Simple. Let's call fish, uh, feijoada, let's forget about feijoada, let's call black beans too. Or Perfect. Or black beans too. Simple, and I, right? Do, do you have a cookbook, Pericles? No, actually, I, uh, you asked Green uh, how was uh, her, uh, uh, how she hired him as a chef. Actually, I was not a chef until a year ago. I, I'm a dietitian. Uh, my degree is in sports nutrition and I always took classes and you hire many different uh, chefs to work with us. And always those chefs coming with the mentality, oil, salt, and I'm doing, I'm cooking this way I, for myself since I was 15. So I always have to transfer the information to them and they get upset because they cannot get the same results. So last year I decided to change and instead to teach them how to cook, I decided to me be educated as a chef. So I. I did a whole Ruby uh, class, uh, did plant days, uh, uh, chef class, and then I turned myself as a chef. So I don't have a cookbook, but probably you're gonna put together a green fair cookbook soon. How long have you been following the plant-based diet and how long has it been SOS free? Well, if I answer this question, I'm gonna tell my age. I just wanna I tell you, I changed my diet when I was 15. That's amazing. But how did That's you- That's years ago, right? How did you even know about it back then? I learned with my coach, I was a volleyball player, and I learned with my coach at that time, uh, who was Japanese, and he teach me the macrobiotic diet, to exclude oil, exclude salt, exclude animal products. At that time, my goal was to play better volleyball. And I started when I, Retired from volleyball, I just was thought, why am I going to go back to eating chicken and fish and dump olive oil? You can feel great. I want to continue to do this. That's fantastic. Well, happy to have you on our team.
sorry, my team. Oh, I said I'm happy to have you on our team. Oh, yes. Wow, we have so many friends in common, Chaplin Jay, and first time you do something together. I always want to go to events, or it's Chad Sarno, it's Jeff Novak, it's Dr. McDougal, it's uh, Dr. Colin Campo. I always come in something across our pet. First time you do something together. Um, do, you, do you ever use an Instant Pot? Yes, I'm not a big fan because I like to cook uh, like a, the old style, but what I, I do is I soak my beans overnight and I do everything during the day because my day is long now uh, in the kitchen. I start 4 or 5 a.m. and I cook the whole day. So I don't use the uh, instant pot. So that much. Understood. It's okay to cook the old-fashioned way. You want to show us the recipe? Yes. Well, let's start. This recipe is extremely simple. It's the way we poor people in Brazil, and most of athletes use that for soccer players, volleyball players, to uh, have a, a, a meal we make you like a go to the day. Most of poor people in Brazil start the day with uh, this dish and then go to the whole day walking, uh, walking the fields and have the energy for the whole day. Uh, rich people in Brazil don't use that. that. And they, what they do is they have a lot of meat and chicken fish in those beans, and they got to overweight and have disease. So let's do in the food people. So we're going to need an onions. It's nothing more boring than see somebody shopping onions, so I finish up the onions here. Minced garlic, red pepper flakes, paprika, three olives, bay leaves, trumpet mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, and of course the beans. So the black beans I cook this morning. So I soak overnight, I put, a, I put those bay leaves in a water with the beans. This morning, uh, that was last night. This morning, I arrived, I put in the pan, and uh, one hour later, it was done. There's no nothing in the beans besides water and the daily mix. You're going to divide two parts. One part, you're going to go to the oven, and another part, you're going to go to the pan. So the part to go to the oven is this paprika, the olives, and the water. And I, this is my Vitamix, I'm gonna blend, and I'm gonna marinate the mushrooms in that blend. The way people in, in general know this kind of dish is with pork, pulled pork. So our pulled pork now is uh, two pet mushrooms. I'm gonna lose the fork, and I'm gonna pull the trumpet mushroom. That's gonna go to our marinade. Those are meaty mushrooms. It's beautiful, those mushrooms. Those are trump trumpets. Well, after this process and marinate for five minutes, we're gonna put in the uh, in the oven to bake together with the shiitake. The shiitake is not that much work. It's just fine with my shiitake. Now imagine this go to this combination to marinate. And the result is this here. After you put it in the oven, it's like a not that crispy, but there is more dry mix with the spices, paprika and the olives there. So it's not olive oil, but I put some olives just to give some uh, taste. This traditional way is with olive oil. I use three olives, and that's gonna fit. Uh, you have about seven servings, eight servings in this dish. So divide three olives by eight is almost nothing else. Now, second part is you're gonna start to season the beans. And you wanna do a technique, you 
you probably you very familiar. I watch some videos. Uh, you doing that? Is the dry saute? So the requirements for dry saute is a very hot pan. And there's this pan here to test if the pan is hot. Oh, it's um, it's showing a different camera now, and not you anymore. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So to test if is the uh, pin is hot, we're gonna drop the water. It's not hot yet. But I want to go here to the pin is hot. And this is one one of the uh, the classes we do in the Kickstarter is teach people dry saute, water saute, uh, use the techniques to avoid and use any kind of oil. Here in our kitchen, we don't have any kind of oil. Every time the uh, fire department comes to inspect us, they are surprised about this part here. Here, yeah, the regular restaurant, this is also is full of oil. This is, you don't clean. You don't have to spend money cleaning because is not oil coming out. Uh, so, so uh, Pericles, I have a couple of questions. One uh -huh. do, uh, from Monarch, do you always soak beans, every kind of bean? I'm sorry, the question is? Do you always soak your beans, no matter what kind I of beans? I always soak the beans, yes. Always soak the beans. It's easy to cook when you, you soak. Uh, probably one bean you don't have to soak uh, for long is the pinto beans, they are quicker to cook. Great, and we have Catherine who's new here to the show and she's wondering why no oil? Why no oil? Is the, um, for me, my opinion, is the epicenter of the obesity now because it's, nothing is more calorie denser than the oils. In, right. Inflammation also is a big issue. Uh, there's no oil, cooking oil you're gonna found with the right rate of omega-6, omega-3, is so all high in omega-6. I mean, and there's no fiber, there's no nutrients. It's a fractionated food. It's not been eaten throughout most of human history. It, you can't find it in nature and it injures your endothelial. So I would recommend you either read uh, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. or one of his free videos on YouTube. And he completely explains why not a single drop of oil. No other animal in the, uh, our planet to consume oil, just as... Yeah, we need fat, but we get fat in everything we need. We don't need to be adding a 4,000 calorie a pound non-nutritive toxic substance to our food. And, you know, have you found, Pericles, that once you get rid of oil, it's so much easier to either completely get rid of or decrease the salt because oil just locks your taste. Uh, when I was a volleyball player, many of my uh, teammates, they have uh, injuries, shoulder, knees, pain after practice. We practice 10 hours per day. We start our day practicing, have a break to uh, have a meals, practice again in the afternoon. My days start usually 7 a.m. and end 8 a.m. All the time, jumping. And I heard this from doctors. Uh, not our doctor, not our pain doctor, but doctors. If you run, if you jump, you're going to destroy your joints. At 55, I run as much as I can, any day I can. I still play, of course, I'm not retired, I will play professional volleyball. I don't have pain, pain in my knees, I don't have pain in my joints. I know most of volleyball players or in professional sports, they have heart attacks. I never had this problem in my life. And some people can say, oh, it's an excellent position. I can get to no oil, no inflammation uh, uh, in my diet. Okay, now we have the onions here caramelizing. I don't want to go home, but it will be a water because I'm going to add now the garlic because I have too much water. The red pepper flakes, the salt in the bitter pepper flakes, pepper flakes. I'm going to reduce the heat. So this here is onion, garlic, pepper flakes. And that, oh, I think I forgot to mention about the tempeh. I, uh, uh, is in the recipe too. If you're not familiar with tempeh, tempeh is 
fermented soybeans. I steam the tempeh, and I use my hands to crumble the tempeh. I want to have the tempeh there. I'm going to use now the mushrooms. And I'm going to add the beans. A little bit more of water because you want to do a stew, not soup. A stew. I'm father of twins. So when you have a twins, you have to do everything quickly. That's helped me a lot to transfer to our customers in Greenfield how to be efficient in the kitchen. Uh, those recipes used take like a 10, 15 minutes to, to prepare. Those are the program we teach uh, uh, Kickstarters here. So the bean part is done. We're gonna move now to the second part, which is called the vinaigrette. And that's we're gonna be served together with the beans and compose in minced red onions. Very small dice, red, red or pepper, parsley, and white fennec. And what I'm gonna do is extremely simple. Oh, the box. And three mines olives. And parsley. Either I'm gonna massage the mix. I mean, even that looks good on its own. Yes. You, if you like, you can add tomatoes, you can add corn here. This is the traditional vinaigrette. You leave for about five minutes, you don't come to prepare and serve. And you can store this mix for two or three days. Now, I never saw this in a regular restaurant here in US, but I call farofa. It's a mix of a yucca with uh, carrots. So traditionally, it's used a lot of oil. So this is the yucca flour is medium dry ground. Shred carrots, one more onion, and Olives, very small dice. And we're going to use the same technique. We're going to go for this is small casserole now. We're going to use a dry salt air. Dry salt air means hot pan. So the pan is warm now. Then I add the onions, the olives. Did you create all the recipes for your? Restaurant? Sorry, I don't get the question. Yeah, did you create all the recipes for the restaurant? Actually, I adapt. Uh, my life was an adaptation. Uh, my mom, when I come home, age of 15, and say, I'm not going to eat your food anymore. She just say, Oh, good luck, prepare your meals. That's how I learned. So I try to adapt uh, uh, regular recipes all my life. When I was working Whole Foods, I have an amazing, amazing chef there in the head of the culinary department, Whole Foods, Chet Sun. Make my life much easier to help uh, see him working, uh, learn anything. Chef and Derek are amazing. And I, what I use here in Green Fair is you pick up a regular recipe and you adapt to recipes SOS. And by the way, I discovered that's pretty easy, it's fun. The first thing is fun. Second is easy because most of the recipes, when you pick up uh, uh, the history, the people, when they create the recipe, they don't create the junk. The junk is a modern version of the recipes. Uh, one thing I love in history 
And when we start to study about how those recipes are being created, people start to create without oil, without animal products. And it's easy to come back and reverse the damage. I have the uh, onions, the olives, I'm going to add the paprika and the carrots. And I'm going to toast now a little bit. The yucca flour, which actually you cannot call this yucca flour, you can call ground yucca. If you use yucca flour, it's totally different the uh, dissolving. Yeah, and where do you get yucca flour? I've never, I don't think I've ever seen it, and I don't think I've ever had yucca. Any uh, Latino uh, grocery store, you in Los Angeles have many different ones. Uh, we have around US many different Latino supermarkets. They carry as yucca, medium ground flour, but actually it's not a real flour, it's founder as a yucca granulate. Okay, the parofa is ready. Now let's see how we come to the plate. I have some brown rice here. I'm going to serve the brown rice. And I use the brown rice as the base. I'm gonna use the feijoada at the top. The farofa. And in the end, I'm gonna add my vinaigrette. Oh my God, is that, is that how large it would actually be served at the restaurant? No, actually this dish, you don't serve in the restaurant. This is my quick meal for myself. In home, we do a lot with those, uh, but this is the size, a regular size for, for a meal in the restaurant. What I show you here now is, you have the, the chance to see for the first time the dish you're gonna use in our next kickstart, Meals, the meals we provide to people to go in the meal plan. That's going to be in the next six Wow, okay. how big are the it's portions in the restaurant, though? Because you know, you, I'm sure you understand, Pericles, that concept of calorie density. When you're not eating oil and a lot of nuts and seeds and avocado, you need more food. So, are the are the portions fairly hearty at the restaurant? You uh, use avocados in very small amounts. Uh, no oil. Uh, some nuts you use in sauces, but I try to reduce as much as I can to use in, in sauces. Uh, I use corn salad to make thicker, uh, use more walnuts in salad dresses, but there's minimal amount of nuts. Seeds, chia seeds, uh, flax seeds we use in our bakery, but not that much nuts. Nice. Uh, Jerry wants to know, is there a substitute for yucca flour? And is it the same as cassava or tapioca? Uh, same as cassava. But the problem when you find this in a regular uh, grocery store, it's very small powder. It's very small powder. It's very processed. The, the one in Latino places is not that processed. It's like a granulate yucca. You can do it home too. You can bake and uh, cut, first cut in small pieces, bake, and put in the vitamins to adjust. Wow. What, what do, do you eat at the restaurant? Sorry? Do you eat most of your meals at the restaurant or do you cook them at home? I both. I use, uh, I eat a lot of uh, the meals here. Every time I create something, I, for example, now this summer is moussaka. I love that, the dish. It's a dish with, uh, you domesticate, you take all the junk out, all the olive oil, all the cheese. It's uh, amazing. Uh, but I, in the morning, I do uh, intermittent fasting most of my time. So I eat around 6, 7 a.m., maximum 8. 
and my second meal at two. So the first meal I do at home, second meal I do uh, here in Greenfield. What, what, what do you normally have for lunch and breakfast if those are your two meals? <laughs> this is a, a, the most common question I receive. And you never know. I, whatever is in my uh, refrigerator. And I should describe for CSA, so I receive boxes of uh, from spring to fall, it's a box of uh, uh, produce, whatever is that. And I try to do a huge variety of vegetables in my diet. I don't like the idea to eat uh, in the same meal every day. Uh, I know I respect the likes. Uh, everybody's different. That's probably because I'm very curious about things going to taste with it do a different combination, and I listen to my body, how I feel. If it's a day I run, uh, I'm gonna probably looking for more, uh, a large meal and much more carbs. If I don't run, if there's a day I spend more time in the computer, even in the computer, I never sit. I, my day is my food all day. Uh, I sit probably to drive here, and I feel shame for that, but I need 10 minutes from here. Uh, but that's the time I sit. Nice. So depend my, I, I listen to my body to see how much calories are, or I don't even think about calories, or how much food I want that day. Yeah, it's a monarch saying it's amazing how quickly you put the meal together, but you had all the prep done, and I think that really helps. Yes. Oh, yeah. the prep is everything. Uh, you teach here a uh, technique to plan, and I do recommend what I do for myself for others. Uh, I go, I cook in the fry. For some people, this is the best. Working in the refrigerator, everything is there. You just, I always have nice tomatoes, onions, uh, mushrooms ready to go. Because the worst thing, in my opinion, you can, you can have in your day if you not very well uh, used to this kind of lifestyle is the sign the last meal, because that's going to lead you to go to the drive -thru. That's going to lead you to, you to have more and more calories. What you, uh, if you have a chance and have everything ready, and I do this in my uh, off time, is prepping. I always have diced tomatoes, diced peppers, diced onions, spices. My usually full of vegetables, not processed foods. Include, I don't, I don't use cans in home. Here, probably uh, cans, no, it's everything is like a, it's only thing in containers here are spices. That's the only thing you have the kitchen. We was very surprised in the beginning when they were uh, star because you shop, you guys, you shop everything here. Uh, most of the restaurants receive everything pre shopped or pre made. Food here had a life. Coming, huge produce delivers, and this is how I eat in home. If you like what I eat, what kind of breakfast you have, I use anything fresh. And I cook or eat raw. I very different in the world. So, David says, Did you know the Brazilian chef? Uh, Remy Villarreal, who lived a long time in Los Angeles. No, I don't know. I'd love to, to meet him or connect with him, but I don't know. Okay. And Deborah says, you look like you're in pretty good shape, Pericles. What kind of exercise do you do? Well, this is a mix first. More exercise, you want to be in shape. I love exercise. My degree is in sports. But the bad news is you cannot exercise a bad diet. Doesn't matter how much you exercise, if you, the base is this good. If you don't put in your uh, body things your body needs, and no more than that, doesn't matter what kind of exercise. My routine, my personal routine is uh, running three times a, a week. I'm not with a marathon. Never gonna compare me need to reach goal or any of those guys are amazing with 40, 30 miles per week. I do like 20, 25 miles per week. Um, you lift weight, me and we lift it together. 
three to four days a, uh, a week, 20 minutes exercise, but I never stopped. I never sit it. I never uh, lay down on the... You know, I remember last time I had like a vacation to just lay down on the beach and stay quiet. I always do something. Nice, thank you. Uh, here's a question from Monarch. What is your favorite go-to spice? My favorite? Your favorite go-to spice? Go-to spice. Uh, probably garlic. I use garlic in everything. I bake with the garlic. I cook with the garlic. Um, yeah, garlic start everything for me. When oh, any recipe call for two or three cloves of garlic, uh, I usually just grab like a four or five or six seven. So that's your favorite. When you were using paprika in this, was this regular paprika or smoked paprika? That's a uh, smoked paprika. Yeah, that's my favorite spice. Do you yeah. ever use balsamic vinegar in your restaurant or personally? Yes, yes, I love all the vinegars. I um, have a obsession with vinegar. Balsamic nice. vinegar. Well, we're gonna send you two free bottles just for being on the show so you can pick a, a, any flavor you like or any two flavors actually, yeah. Uh, David says, how is plant-based eating going in Brazil and the Brazilian community? They're big meat eaters. Do you know Dr. Rosana Oliveira? Because she's, she's Brazilian, I believe. She's well, a plant-based plant doctor. Uh, plant-based in Brazil is, I think it's the same level as here. It's kind of easy to the Brazilians to be plant-based because the abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables compared to California. You have just one or two states where it's cold in Brazil. Like my state is pretty cold, like Virginia, Rio Grande do Sul, from south. But even there, you have an abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables. The big problem we have is when you're coming from a developed country and you want to show the world you are developed, you start to add more and more processed foods. I'm ashamed to be from the same country as the large meat company in the world, and we produce a lot of meat, we export a lot of meat, we destroy the Amazon now. I hope that's changed because this is the path to destruction now. If people continue exploring the resources you have, transition from produce to animal uh, consumption. But you have a lot of good people there. Uh, environmentalists, uh, people who are now pushing in the magical field also for plant based. Yeah. Dr. Michael Greger book, the How Now to Die, now is in his version too. Nice. Just want to read some of the nice comments. Linda says she loves green fare and the food. Sharon says Pericles makes delicious SOS free food and she misses you. And Johnny says Pericles is the person who taught me about being plant based and to get on the road to better health. I thank him for so readily sharing his knowledge and for creating the restaurant with Gwen. Bravo. This is for everybody there. Yep. And you're yeah. So uh, Lauren said something that I was thinking too. Pericles is an interesting name. It sounds Greek, like Hercules. Tell us about your name. Do you have a nickname? Perry? Do we call you Perry for short? Yes, you can call Perry. I very used to call everybody call me Perry or Pericles. Or, it's a Greek name. I'm not Greek, I'm Brazilian. Uh, my family is from Portugal, original, but uh, my grandfather, to my father, Benjamin Pericles, because he was a history teacher. And here I am, there it is. And my son is very So it's a position. Are any of your family members plant-based or SOS-free along with you? Sorry? Are any of your family members also eating a plant-based SOS-free diet? Well, very interesting. For a long time, for 12 years, from age of 15 to 27, few people in my family knew or my friends knew about plant-based because I use as a adventure to play sports. First thing. Second, yes, uh, my kids, I have a twins, they're 11 years old. They grew up in two age of two years and seven, complete plant -based. When they divorce, then my ex-wife uh, have another uh, husband who introduced to them meat or animal products and no SOS. So they are kind of half and half. 
but about 2008, I decided to promote more for my family. My brother is 10 years older, uh, uh, younger than me. So I have a 10 years difference. He is in uh, cholesterol education. He has diabetes. He has high blood pressure. And all my cousins, all my uncles and aunts from both sides, mother and dad, they are in the same path with diabetes, with heart disease. And every time I go to Brazil with this them, they ask me before I go to a party or a gym, they ask me, are you still in the stupid diet? And I say, yes, I still in the stupid diet, but I am the only one here without medication. Everybody there is under medication. Everybody there, actually, my father passed when I was 14 for diabetes. My mom passed 20 years later with a heart disease. So all my family have a history of diabetes and heart disease. My brother called uh, my luck, luck, uh, because I have uh, better genes. So I don't know, maybe I got a lot of tickets. Maybe I have a lifestyle prevent me to have those diseases. Yeah. I'm just curious, what is your favorite dish or favorite thing to eat in general and at the restaurant in particular? This summer is a moussaka. The moussaka is a Greek dish with uh, uh, bacon, eggplants, potatoes, tomatoes. I add also shiitake and a very oregano marinara sauce, like a Greek style marinara sauce. Tomato sauce with a base of have no oregano. I love it. Okay. And what 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 is your favorite thing that you make at home regularly? Sorry, question again? Your favorite thing to eat at home that you make regularly. Well, you, you, you have to you have to talk while you show because otherwise it triggers me. Black beans. Black beans in everything. Black beans. Wow. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, huh? Yeah, I can survive in black beans. I uh, saw an interview one day with Dr. Gregory. Somebody asked if, we, if you have to pick something to eat in Una Island and be 10 years there, the only thing you can pick, what are you going to pick? He, thought, he answered flex seeds because the whole nutrition uh, complex of uh, flex seeds. If I have to pick something to eat the rest of my life, I'm in the island, no food around, like this. Wow, that's interesting. That is so cool. What is the most oh. pop? What is the most popular dish on a regular basis at the restaurant? Uh, Thai quinoa. It's a kale and quinoa in the Thai sauce. It's a ginger Thai sauce. This is the most favorite. By the way, that dish I created by was a fail dish. As a fail, I uh, was creating something different. And in the end, uh, you share here the recipes from here. This is a part of my crew at Victor Mesco. Cool. Uh, 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 this is part of my crew here. <laughs> so, uh, so I share the crew. I, I create something, I share the crew. Green also is my uh, kobaya pink. I, sometimes I picture, this is new, how you like. And I was creating this uh, stir fry and uh, end up with like a really dense. I was not happy with that, but everybody liked in the kitchen. And then they decided to put in the menu and uh, now it's 40 years in a row, the best self. So it's a question from Silvana. Do you have a YouTube channel or an Instagram? I have Instagram, yes. Uh, Pericles, my name is 66. Nice. I'm not very active in the uh, uh, social media. I post things like a new recipe or uh, a run or a new kind of exercise. I do it, but uh, don't expect too many things, but it's there. Cool. I follow a lot of people, but I don't have too much content. Yeah. I recommend the Green Fair, Instagram, and Facebook. Nice. Monarch says it must have been very difficult for you to watch your family suffer from diseases that you know could have been prevented and even reversed. Yes, it's difficult. It's kind of uh, uh, sad sometimes. Uh, 
but I have to accept, I have to understand everybody is different. Everybody has their uh, own path. And sometimes it's me just pushing one way, they have to learn from somebody else. And some people, back, they, I have a, a cousin who just this year, she come into school to me here in Virginia and she spent uh, three days, just three days in my home. And she say, well, I cannot even think about any problems anymore. I, she's, when she, uh, she living in Florida, and when she come back home in Florida, she start to put everything in the trash. She sent me pictures of her, her pantry, completely empty, because every single thing she checked, I teach her the label reading. Uh, uh, so she was checking the label in the, the, her pantry, everything went up in the trash. So sometimes you look in one person you never expect. I wish I can have more impact in my family or in our community here too, but everybody's different. That's cool. Let's see if I see another. Oh, something out of question. There was a question about freezing foods. Hold on. Where did it go? Oh, have, do you do you have prep ready to go foods? Do you freeze? Uh, do you oh, freeze things? I try to don't freeze. I try to uh, keep in the refrigerator, and that's also making me use the food. Uh, it makes me feel like a if I spend time here. Nice, nice, nice. If food is aging, it's losing nutrients every second there. Uh, and my taste buds, they tell me. When the, if something's freeze or something is fresh shop or one or two days, I have a kind of rule for me, three days maximum in the refrigerator and I have to use or go to the fresh. I have fresh. a question. Who's going to eat that beautiful plate of food you made? We have a cameraman here, who is uh, my cameraman. That is fantastic. Do you have any pets? Do I have what? Any pets? I had, I first time, first time ever. I'm pets free the last three, four years. I born with dogs. My parents uh, bought for me when I born a dog who born exactly the same day as me. So I grew up with dogs. All my life I have dogs. The last four years when my pets pass, and actually plant-based dogs, they live 70 years both, the last ones. And when they pass, I decide to don't have pets for one single reason. This project here takes me a lot of time. I don't spend too much time at home, it's not fair to have a dog by yourself. Uh, I, I have everything you can imagine, from hamsters, cats, uh, reptiles, and of course, dogs all my life. Wow, great. Well, thank you. You're just, you're very, I'd love to, you know, do an Iron Chef with you sometime. Please. That it would be so fun to cook either well, either with you on your team or maybe even as an opponent because you're obviously very talented and you make your dishes very visually appealing. It's not a child, no opponent, it's together, it's a team. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having this restaurant and this vision. It's, I really appreciate what you do. Thank you very much, Atej. It was a pleasure. Thank you. So maybe maybe you'll come back and maybe we'll have your pastry chef back as well. It would be fun to have you come back and make another dish because you do that. You did it quickly, and maybe even your yeah. pastry chef. Of course. Thank you so much, and thanks all of you right. for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous culinary demonstration. This time from Chef John Nowakowski, and he is going to be doing things really remarkably with fruits and vegetables. Thanks again, Gwen and Pericles, and all the staff of Green Fair, and take care. Thank you. Bye bye.